My name is Ben Greenfield, and on this episode of the Ben Greenfield Life Podcast. One thing about photobiomodulation is there is enough in the literature to show that it reduces inflammatory factors. When you have chronic pain, it is very often attributable to the presence of the inflammatory factors. You are not fully healed. The body is, is there. Sometimes it amounts to almost like autoimmune. The body starts to attack itself. But photobiomodulation has been found to reduce this. But I've, I've seen where you can literally see the joints swollen and they wear braces. And I put this a photobiomodulation, we pounce it at 1000 hertz. And I, I believe a faster frequency has an inhibitory effect on the tissues. It actually helped to reduce pain almost immediately. Using photobiomodulation for pain has been around for, for a very long time. Faith, family, fitness, health, performance, nutrition, longevity, ancestral living, biohacking, and a whole lot more. Welcome to the show. All right, folks, your feet are important. Skin on the bottom of your feet has thousands of nerves used to control your movement and your posture. The more you feel your feet, the more you feel the ground, the better you move. A lot of injuries, orthopedic injuries, knee injuries, ankle injuries, hip injuries, even shoulder injuries start with the feet. So this genius group at a company called Noboso has developed the whole line of products just for your feet. We're not talking about toenail clippers. We're talking about things like their Neuroball for triggering proprioceptive receptors in the bottom of the foot. Splay no toe spacers you can wear while you're asleep or during the day to allow your toes to become more like ancient humankind's toes rather than the modern compressed toes we walk around with these days. They got activation insoles that keep your feet alive and turned on while you're walking around in your shoes. They allow for increased proprioception any time of the day, which of course improves athleticism and performance. They even have recovery socks that you can wear even if you aren't wearing the insoles and you aren't wearing shoes. And the recovery socks also increase your proprioceptive feeling in the feet. They even have a mat. I keep it in my sauna that allows for better foot health and foot recovery and balance while you're doing things like yoga, for example. So anyways, Naboso has this great suite of products. I have something from Naboso on my feet just about every day. You go to naboso.com slash Ben and use code Ben for 10% off. That's nabos dot com slash Ben and use code Ben for 10% off. I don't think it's any secret, especially for those of you who have read my cookbook, that I guzzle extra virgin olive oil. I use it in like everything. Not only is it a myth that you're not supposed to cook with olive oil, because extra virgin olive oil actually has a bunch of flavanols and polyphenols in it that allow it to be pretty heat stable, even for things like sauteing, baking, broiling, etc., but the health benefits of this stuff, I mean, as far as like lowering risk of heart disease, helping prevent type 2 diabetes, certain types of cancer, high blood pressure, Alzheimer's disease, obesity. I mean, it's basically zero carb, low carb, ketogenic, friendly to a paleo lifestyle, a cornerstone of the longevity enhancing Mediterranean diet. And as any chef will tell you, that's where the flavor's at. And a really good extra virgin olive oil has amazing flavor. The problem with the ones that you buy at the grocery store is they're not fresh, right? After six months, the polyphenols and antioxidants and olive oil start to degrade. And if you actually look at the bottle label at the grocery store of the olive oil that you're probably buying right now, it's older than six months. It's in plastic. It's not in like that dark glass container. And if they're already older than six months at the time that you buy them, that means they've sat in storage, then in shipping, then in a warehouse, then on store shelves, even years growing stale and rancid before you even put them in your cart. And then a lot of them have extra bad oils added to them, particularly canola oil. So I go straight to the source and get not only the world's most delicious artisanal olive oil, but real fresh, the real stuff, extra virgin olive oil. I get it from this company called the Fresh Pressed Olive Oil Club. I've been a member for, I think, almost 10 years now. I get three new bottles sent to me every quarter. They're hunted down by this guy who's been on my podcast twice, TJ Robinson, the olive oil hunter, who also does vinegars now, by the way, that are amazing. I have a podcast coming out about that if it's not already out. 
You're going to hear it pretty soon. But this stuff is the best olive oil I've ever used in my life. Guilt-free. It's real. It's not cut with other stuff. It's not rancid. And it even comes with this cool like little booklet where you could read about the farm, where it was harvested, who grew it, what it tastes like, tasting notes, recipes to use it in. Better yet, they're going to give us all a bottle for a buck. One bottle of this olive oil for a dollar so you can taste the difference for yourself. Here is where you go for all of this. Getfresh38.com. That's like the number 38. Getfresh. 38.com and that's everything you need to get this extra virgin olive oil for yourself it's one of the funnest clubs ever so check it out extra virgin olive oil it's real artisanal stuff straight from olive oil hunter tj robinson my friend one of the best guys out there in the olive oil industry get fresh 38.com you know i don't think it's any secret that I am and have been for quite some time a fan of this anti-aging strategy of using nad to protect the cells and to enhance the health of the mitochondria. There was a form of NAD that was mentioned when I interviewed Tony Robbins called NAD3. We talked about it. I was intrigued about it. I didn't know anybody was actually making it. But that, along with two other ingredients, one called spermidine and one called resveratrol, also came up in that interview and are also kind of like the darlings of the anti-aging industry right now. Spermidine, resveratrol, and NAD. Well, what we talked about in that podcast was how there's this very unique new form of NAD called NAD3. It's a licensed NAD ingredient, huge amount of bioavailability. And when combined with spermidine and resveratrol, this is like an unrivaled formula for anybody who wants to enhance aging using NAD and using a very unique bioabsorbable form of it. So this company called Biostack Labs formulated this stuff. It's called NAD Regen. It's not NAD. It's NAD3. So NAD Regen is actually the only formula in the world to use NAD3, which is a licensed ingredient with human trials behind it. But they've combined that with a special form of spermidine along with resveratrol and niacinamide. So all these ingredients put together are like freaking food for the mitochondria and act as very unique, very effective cellular protectants to enhance anti-aging and longevity. It's a pretty unrivaled formula, very unique blend. So again, it's NAD3, but then it's also got spermidine, resveratrol, and niacinamide in it. And they're cutting us all a deal. Basically, two bottles of this stuff costs about $134. And what happens is if you order, they're going to give you another free bottle. So that extra free bottles were $67. Pretty good deal. You go to biostacklabs.com slash Ben. Biostacklabs.com slash Ben. I do about five days on, two days off. Any week where I might happen to get like some kind of NAD patch or NAD IV, I don't take extra NAD. But man, for an oral formula, this one's pretty unrivaled in the industry. Brand new. You can get your hands on it now. So biostacklabs.com forward slash Ben. Well, folks, on social media and Elsewhere, you may have occasionally seen me wearing this crazy laser light helmet on my head with these red flashing nasal probes shoved into my nostrils. And perhaps you've thought, what the heck is that? And why would somebody ever choose such a horrific fashion statement? But stick with me here because there's actually something to this this science called photobiomodulation. There's, there's actually a lot of something and a lot of science behind it because, you know, the basis of all of our thoughts and behavior and emotions is the interaction between our neurons, our, our neuronal networks that communicate. The way that neural electrical signals occur is via brainwaves. You're no doubt familiar with brainwaves. Well, you can stimulate brainwaves using light. That's called brain photobiomodulation. You can literally stimulate the mitochondria in the neuronal cells or or the neurons in the brain. And that can increase cellular energy levels in the brain and elsewhere. And so what I do is I, I put on this red light technology. It's like a helmet. And three or four times a week, I'll wear this thing for like 25 minutes when I'm working in the morning. And, uh, I use this thing called a V light V I E light. It is one of the devices out there that's actually been research and scientifically shown to be able to modulate and alter your brain waves using light energy, using uh, near-infrared light. And, and they've measured this through EEG measurements. 
I did a podcast about this, gosh, like more than five years ago. I've been using the device ever since, but a lot has changed in the field of brain photobiomodulation and photobiomodulation in general. So what I wanted to do was to get one of the world's leading experts on photobiomodulation and brain photobiomodulation on the show. His name is Dr. Lou Lim, L-E-W-L-I-M. He was on the show before when I interviewed him initially about this V-Lite, but like I mentioned, a lot has changed. There's these different devices now that have come out at different wavelengths and with different treatment areas. And I mean, everything from concussion to TBI to shifting the body very rapidly into a bliss meditative state to alternating between gamma and alpha frequencies. There's so much going on here with these devices. And I think more people really need to know about this. I mean, I've, I've even had friends who have had things like early onset dementia and Alzheimer's who have actually purchased units for and uh, and, and they've noticed a, a profound difference in terms of their alertness, in terms of their cognitive performance. So there's definitely something going on here. Uh, Lou, welcome back to the show, man. It's been a little while. Thanks, Ben. It's great to be in touch with you again. Yeah, for sure. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm just curious, you know, because because when I interviewed you last time, we just kind of jumped in and started talking about the lights. But for you personally, I'd, I'd just be curious where what your actual background is in terms of especially how you came to understand and use photobiomodulation yourself, whether for your brain or elsewhere. Well, the history actually goes back quite a while. Um, you know, I'm in Toronto now in Canada. Believe it or not, this all started in California. I was in the Bay Area for a number of years. In the mid-90s, we experimented with lasers. And during that time, you know, uh, photobiomodulation wasn't known at all in North America. It was a kind of a Soviet bloc domain. The uh, science of, uh, I think it was probably called something close to photo therapy okay. uh, was discovered in 1967 in Hungary, which was part of the Soviet bloc, and you know, Russians were actually setting up laser centers and doing a, a lot of cool stuff. And the literature was mainly in the Russian language. But uh, we got wind of it, I experimented with what this can do, and it came out of the idea that the Russians were uh, literally injecting red light into your vein. I mean, when you say when you say injecting red light into a vein, this is actually a protocol that uh, I know a lot of like biohackers will do now. That like they'll do uh, like a UV blood irradiation or infrared blood irradiation. A lot of folks will combine that. I have a doctor who combines it with ozone. They'll do like a ozone pass of the blood and at the same time irradiate the blood with light to activate the mitochondria. There was even one doctor I just was with down in Florida who combines it with methylene blue. He'll literally like do a, a methylene blue IV, and apparently methylene blue interacts with photons of light to increase mitochondrial energy production. And so this idea of like light-based IVs is something that I think is even increasingly common now amongst kind of like the biohacking and the longevity community. Yeah, actually, this is UV blood irradiation is a little bit different from using red and near infrared light. Yeah, this is actually interesting. UV light uh, irradiation has been going on for quite a long time. And what they do is they extract blood and get into a chamber where they direct UV light. And, you know, some ideas was it was antimicrobial, it was um, antioxidative. And uh, yes, methylene blue is actually a very interesting uh, solution to add because it has its own other properties. It's been experimented with, um, even for Alzheimer's disease, actually, there was a drug based on methylene blue. Uh, lots, yeah, lots of interesting things going on, but this is, with red light is a little bit different. They actually they still do now a number of practitioners. Um, it's not many now. They still inject uh, lasers, laser mm -hmm. lights into the vein. And the idea is to get a systemic effect, you know? Yeah. Well, let, let's let's cut it short. Um, and just going to um, some basic biology and physics here. Okay. Now, the thing about red and infrared, it can penetrate the skin and membrane. So my belief is you don't have to do it to get light into your body, mainly because red and infrared can penetrate through the, through the skin. So 
uh, I try to find out, okay, where is the, to get, you know, higher success level, what, where would you find the thinnest membrane? Uh, and the nose actually is, is a good area because it's really, the membrane is really thin, so you don't need a lot of power to deliver uh, red and la low level laser. Be like a, like a light based nasal probe. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I think uh, the, the idea of getting light into your red light into your body to work, simple way is do a probe uh, inside the nose. It goes through a thin membrane. And uh, with red, red doesn't penetrate too deep, so it's enough to irradiate or flood, you know, the, um, the vasculature in that area uh, to get this effect. Now, we also have a tank, which is a longer wavelength, the infrared. Uh, the idea of using 810 near infrared is to have a deeper penetration to reach the brain. So that's, you know, that's uh, keeping it brief. Okay. All right. Got it. So, so basically, when we're targeting the brain with near infrared light, whether through the nostrils or I assume that since there's lights on top of this thing, almost like a helmet through the top of the head, that gets delivered to the mitochondria. And it's my understanding that the light's actually absorbed by an enzyme, the, uh, an enzyme called cytochrome C oxidase. And that then uses the photon packets of light to essentially initiate things like ATP production. But then there's research on healing damaged brain cells and improving cerebral blood circulation and reducing inflammation and toxicity, even regenerating damaged brain cells. And what you're saying is that even the wavelength of light is going to influence how much is absorbed or what the actual brain experiences based on the wavelength of light that's delivered. Yeah, um, you know, longer wavelength uh, theoretically penetrates deeper. So if you want to penetrate deeper, you, you apply longer wavelength. And that's going to near infrared and then infrared. Uh, think about the whole spectrum of electromagnetic wave. So you have really, really short, high energy uh, wavelengths in the gamma. This is a different gamma from the gamma wavelength in, in the waveform in the brain. To really long waves in the form of radio waves, FM radio. So imagine when you go to that long of a wavelength, you literally penetrate anything. So the, the question may be asked, why don't we just use long wavelength? You know, it just penetrates to everything. But the thing is, uh, cytochrome oxidase and other forms of, you know, that are in discussion, like water structure and all that, have action spectrum. So cytochrome C oxidase respond only to certain window or wavelengths. So we're talking here basically a, a red around 600 to, to near infrared, I'd say probably below 1,000 nanometers, although there are discussion about 1064 and all that. I think that longer wavelength acts on the water structure. Uh, so that's one aspect of it. Uh, so it's got to fall within that. And even within this window, there are specific wavelengths that, that uh, you know, the mitochondria respond better. And there is some, you know, there are some blind spots that uh, around 7, 760 to 780 that, that don't seem to do anything. So we try to fall within that. And also, as you go longer, you get absorption, absorption by water, so it becomes uh, less effective. All you do when, when you, water absorbs energy like that, you only produce heat. Okay. All right, got it. So, so when we're looking at these different wavelengths, you know, and, and, and I look at the different devices that you guys have, first of all, there's, there's the 810 wavelength, and that one seems to be the one that most of these devices use, the, the near-infrared light at 810 nanometers. And that's what you have in, like, the, the Duo device and the Gamma and the Alpha. I, I have the Duo, which just allows me to choose Gamma or Alpha. But even though the wavelength of the light is 810, it's my understanding that the pulse rate, meaning either 10 hertz pulse rate of the light for the alpha effects or a 40 hertz pulse wave for the for the gamma effect is going to cause different effects in the brain, right? Depending on, on the actual rate at which the wavelength is pulsed. Yeah, we actually started with the 10 hertz 
10 hertz being being the alpha being the alpha yeah uh in fact our first dementia study uh, it's a small study used 10 hertz that was our first prototype uh, we eventually moved on to 40 hertz just because um, we ex- we experimented more and then the literature was was developed developing to suggest that 40 hertz actually improve uh, memory and coding and then there was this big high impact study done by MIT on with Alzheimer's um, markers so uh, they found that 40 hertz actually when they were in this f- chamber of flickering lights actually uh, reduced the beta amyloid plaques in the brain and, and, and so on. So it got very interesting. We actually did quite a lot of experiments on 40 hertz. We experimented on healthy brains uh, and saw the effect on the high frequency waveform, uh, alpha, beta, gamma. And then there was very interesting for the first time, we showed the world that we could reduce the uh, amplitude of the slow waves. Sometimes it can uh, be attributable to, you know, like uh, inatten- inattention and slow thinking and sleepiness and so on. We can actually reduce the amplitude of these slow waveforms when we deliver gamma into the brain. Now, 10 hertz is kind of like a uh, like a default, you know, a template setting for your brain because uh, we were aiming for the default mode network. When you close your eyes, have some introspection, do nothing, your brain gets into this default mode and it is when the default mode is healthy it generally means that your brain is also healthy and when you close your eyes uh, into that in that mode uh, you are both activating the default mode network and actually increasing alpha so they're both kind of uh, related now there were earlier animal studies done at harvard at mike hamblin's lab that showed that 10 hertz actually gave the best outcomes to for uh, traumatic brain injury recovery. So we thought, okay, that's a good place to start. Okay, got it. So we've got the alpha and the gamma, and I want, I want to talk a little bit more later on about some of the effects on things like recovering from TBI and this shift into the bliss state and, and some even the performance implications. Like I mentioned, the, the unit that you guys have that I use, it's the the one that allows me to choose alpha or gamma. So, so it's called the, the duo because I can switch back and forth between the two if I want to. And then it's also got the one, it's got the, the extra attachment that allows you to target other places in the body, like the cerebellum or the thymus gland, or it's got like a second nasal probe that you can put into the nose. I have a few, a few other usage questions though, before we get into some of the things that you guys have found in your research on this. So 810 nanometers is the wavelength that's produced by this unit that I have. Uh, but then you also have some others that that are down in like the 600-ish nanometer wavelength. And one uses an LED and one uses a laser. So why would someone even look into using something like that, like a laser or an LED or a lower wavelength? Are those just like earlier models or are those more for the systemic effect versus the brain effect? Or, or what's how, how come you have these different models? The laser deliver coherent light. So the, the photons are kind of in lockstep. Actually, up to around the year 2000, 2005, most low-level light therapy were actually based on lasers. And I say it's mini legacy. It goes back to the earlier works and it was laser. And up to that point in time, people were still arguing that laser is better uh, because of this concept of having coherent light. But more and more studies are coming out showing that it's not the coherency of the laser that matters. It is the wavelength and and the fact that uh, the enzymes are receptive to uh, photons of this wavelength as opposed to, you know, being being lasers. But having said that, uh, we actually found lasers to be a little bit more effective in delivering some outcomes, but not as significant as um, many people seem to claim. Now, the problem with laser is it is uh, regulated by the FDA. It has several, they have several uh, risk levels for lasers, and this is you no, know, we use the the lowest level for safety, which is below five uh, five milliwatts. So that's 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 uh, in the safety 
regions for general general use. So we, we have been uh, doing that. And if you ask me, I say, yeah, lasers seem to have a marginally more, but you know, by switching to LAG, we don't have to deal with the safety concern and, and stuff like that, you know? Okay, so so like the, the Neuro Duo that I use that, that allows me to switch between alpha and gamma, that's using basically a near infrared LED that will either pulse at 10 hertz or 40 hertz. And you think that that's going to be sufficient for most people's needs in terms of overall health of the brain? Yeah, correct. So the question is, when do we use 10 hertz alpha and when do we use 40 hertz gamma? I would say that for general health, I think alpha is good. In fact, personally, uh, before I go to bed, I use the you know alpha. I use it like once once every two days. Yeah, and and by the way, I initially thought the alpha was just for like you know waking you up. I described it as like a cup of coffee for the brain in the morning. But then you told me at one point that it worked really well for sleep onset, and so I can keep the unit up by my bed and put it on and it almost like shifts me into this meditative state. But then later on regarding the alpha, you told me, and, and this was just a few days ago, there's some kind of a new study that you guys have found that allows a user to be able to almost like trigger an immediate switch into what you call the bliss state, like something an advanced meditator would only be able to achieve with a lot of practice. Is that the alpha wavelength that you're targeting for the bliss state? No, it's not. It is something we have discovered. Actually, it's gone back to about five years now, but we're just you know, trying to get studies in line and get, get it tested and, and validated. But uh, anecdotally, we have found photo biomodulation can actually shift brain waveforms, but it is not the alpha. Uh, we, when we experiment with the gamma, very interestingly, some people who have been doing meditation were reporting uh, some altered state, you know, some shift. And, and that got very interesting. But actually, we found that um, it's not just 40 hertz. For some advanced meditators, uh, the frequency is much higher. Uh, many of them actually f- experienced the uh, shift at 120 hertz. Uh, the more advanced ones are going to 40 hertz, and the very, very advanced ones are looking at maybe 1,000 hertz. Uh, if you're not at advanced and you have somewhere uh, in between 1,000 hertz may not be a very positive experience. For me, for example, I'm not a meditator, so so I'm actually getting information from experienced meditators and those who do regularly. Now, uh, everyone has his own sweet spot. I've got people who have their lives changed and they, got their, they changed their lifestyle after experiencing ayahuasca or psilocybin, which is magic mushroom. So they got a shift and their life changed. Their, their, their approach to life is different now. They're more altruistic and so on. And interestingly, um, they felt that they have obtained some kind of permanent shift from their experience. Now, when they tried the gamma the first time, oh, you know, they felt something familiar. But when we use a higher frequency, and this is only attainable to the neuro pro. Uh, you haven't experienced it, uh, Ben, but maybe we should talk about this. So this particular person, I, I, you know, I, I remember vividly, at 400 hertz, he went back and s- into what he actually experienced for the first time with uh, psilocybin. <laughs> he wanted it tried all the time. All right, if you're a biohacker who's looking for the newest cutting-edge products to push your brain and body to that total outer limits of what's possible. You got to check out Newtopia, N-O-O-T-O-P-I-A, Newtopia, the most powerful nootropics on the market today. They're taking the industry by storm, these stacks of nootropics, because they're safe, they're legal, they're highly effective. You probably saw the movie Limitless. It's like that. You take the right formulas at the right times, and you can focus intensely, block out distractions, reduce stress and anxiety, enhance your creativity, boost your memory a whole lot more. And the best part is all their formulas come with a full one-year guarantee. So there's zero risk for you to try them for yourself. So here's the deal. If you feel like you're not fully maximizing your potential, whether personally or professionally, then you owe it to yourself to try Newtopia's formulas. They're a total game changer, and they're going to give you 10% off of any of them. 
Here's how. You go to newtopia.com forward slash Ben. That's N-O-O-T-O-P-I-A dot com slash Ben. And use code Ben10 to get 10% off of any order. That's newtopia.com slash Ben. And use code Ben10 to get 10% off of any order. Do it. You'll thank me later. Let's talk about brain fuel. You probably are familiar with the macronutrients, carbohydrates, and fat, and protein. But there's a fourth one. Ketones and ketones are powerful. They've been scientifically proven to support mental clarity, athletic performance, and metabolic health. They're 28% more efficient at generating energy than sugar alone, meaning you could do more with less. And this stuff called Ketone IQ, made by the good geniuses at HVMN, is the way to experience the magic of ketones without fasting or restricting carbohydrates. And it allows you to unlock some pretty key physical and cognitive benefits on demand. You drink this stuff, you don't get hungry. I had it yesterday when I was out snowboarding and didn't want to think about energy bars and curly cheese fries and hot chocolate. Just one ketone, boom, done. This stuff was created through a $6 million contract from the U.S. Department of Defense, deep partnerships from the top researchers in ketone science, truly cutting edge drink. And you get 20% off of it. You go to hvmn.me slash beng and use code beng20 for 20% off. That's hvmn.me forward slash beng and use code beng20 for 20% off of anything from hvmn. Just anecdotally, I should mention because I've, I've looked into some of this and, you know, that, that triggering of the five HTA receptors via psilocybin also DMT to a certain extent. Uh, some people experience it a little bit with microdosing with LSD and then, of course, ayahuasca. This seems to amplify the effects, at least when I have used like a microdose of psilocybin, say, and combined it with the 40 hertz gamma signal, it does seem to amplify the effects rather notably. But it sounds like what you're saying is your guys' more advanced system, which I think is called the neuro Pro, which I've never actually used, that allows you to to shift to even a, a higher hertz signal that might be even more powerful than that. Yeah, you actually with the Neuro Pro, uh, there are actually more modules on the head, and including one to the back of the head. Um, you can actually use a f- phone that we provide. You know, the the interface is, is quite simple to use. You can actually decide what frequency you want to uh, deliver to your head. And you can do like a sweep, you know, like you could decide to have, say, every two minutes, I'm going to increase my frequency. I can start with 10 hertz. It goes to like after two minutes or five minutes, I go to 20 hertz and then I go to 40 hertz and so on. And you you can go up to 10,000 hertz. 10,000? What's that feel like, 10,000 hertz? Personally, I don't know. (laughs) But I say most people will um, experience something, you know, up to 1,000 hertz and beyond that. I'm not really sure what the experience. I think they don't generally feel much, but it is available if you know, for people to, to experiment. You know, once you have set this particular frequency, you can, you can use it for a period of time and then re-experiment again. You know, it's quite likely that after one to two months, uh, your sweet spot, for that shift could be different. It could be, you know, today is 120, tomorrow, and then two months later, it could be 200 hertz. So it's good to have something like that that you can actually uh, set the you know, the frequency. Now, again, I've never used the Neuro Pro before, but how does the, and it comes with a, with like a little smartphone that's loaded up with the different parameters that you can run, but how does the neuro feedback part of that work? Because from what I understand, the Neuro Pro actually kind of takes things to the next level and allows for some type of neuro feedback component. But what's going on with that? Yeah, when you are neuro feedback practitioners, uh, it's quite likely that you will be using EEG, uh, QEEG, and see, you know, you could, you could be mapping your brain and see uh, which which area of the brain um, is lacking certain waveforms. You could be deficient in, say, alpha. Uh, therefore, you want to improve the alpha in your brain or you're lacking in beta, you know. Uh, some people do cross-coupling between the slow wave uh, theta and beta, so say, for ADHD and so on. So in neurofeedback, um, you try to train the brain of your client to normalize 
and therefore try to establish normal again. It's not a, a, a quick process, you know, you you get a computer with this uh, simulation programs in front of you and you you know you try to train your brain but it could take up to 30 sessions over several months half a year but you could do it you could do it at home without going to a neurofeedback practitioner using this device with the phone you wouldn't be able to see how your eeg is changing but if you're like a meditator you may actually feel it or you know so you know how how to to adjust but neurofeedback Using EEG actually makes life uh, easier. They, they can see what's happening in the brain and try to alter the waveforms. So this is what the neuro tries to do. Got it. So, so back to the light. You know, the, the intranasal, from what I understand, is going to be able to target kind of like the ventral, like frontal areas of the brain. And then the transcranial that actually passes through the soft tissue and, and the small bones in the skull which is the part of the lights that go on top of the head will target the the dorsal or the or the back part of the brain but then you've also got and and this is something that I'll often put on when I'm using my neuro duo which is the one that allows you to go back and forth between alpha and gamma you've got this device now that can be placed on the body meaning there's an extra light that can go on the back of the head and then also can be used on either the thymus gland or that back of the head, that cerebellar area. What's going on when you're using more of the systemic lights versus just the brain lights? Like what's happening if I were to like place this light over my thymus or over my abdominals, for example, and run it at the same time as the, as the headset? Yeah, this is called the X plus. I actually developed this initially to, to boost the immune system. And uh, during the process, I say, hey, you know, some things like this can also add to the neuro. I put one at the back of the head to cover the occipital area, you know, where you process vision and also the cerebellum, which is quite important for, in my opinion, traumatic brain injury. So the, the X-Plus comes with two modules, one for the head, which does that, and one for the, uh, to be positioned over the, Thymus actually is it is both the the, the bone and all the, the the thymus gland. Now the idea is like this: we are using actually uh, this particular device in our COVID nineteen study to to assess the recovery from any from a COVID nineteen severe infection, and that was the key one. What have you found in terms of of how it's working with COVID? We did a pivotal study. We we had about 290 subjects, you know, it was a randomized clinical trial. Uh, the data is being reviewed by the FDA and Health Canada at this, at this very moment. Uh, we'll see what happens when we have submitted a preprint. Yeah, and I'll, I'll put it in the show notes, by the way. You did send it over. I didn't get a chance to, to read it yet, but I'll put all the show notes at, uh, for, for my listening in who wants to dig into it at bengreenfieldlife.com forward slash Lou Lim, L-E-W-L-I-M, Lou's name, bengreenfieldlife.com slash Lou Lim. So you're using this this body, uh, the, the X plus for treatment for COVID infection or for long haul COVID or both? Well, I'll tell you how it works with this particular one. So the X plus also has an intranasal unit, right? You know, when you're attacked by, by COVID viruses, it goes through your nasal area first. Now, one of the things that um, uh, you want to be reminded is photobiomodulation actually helps the mitochondria to release nitric oxide. And their nitric oxide is often trapped in the um, electron transport chain, uh, which compromises you know, its, its function. Photobiomodulation, you actually release the trapped nitric oxide, you, and then the mitochondria functions better. Uh, then nitric oxides get released into your body, and nitric oxide has the ability to inhibit the replication of coronavirus. It doesn't matter what variant it is, um, just coronavirus with the spike proteins in general. So that's that's the basic idea, and it also helps. You know, uh, you know the nose actually has a colony of. Um, of microbes and bacteria, and the delivery of red also helps. Now, bacteria has mitochondria as well, and that helps to release the nitric oxide and helps to inhibit replication of coronaviruses. But once it's gone past 
and you're infected for a few days, gone past your upper respiratory tract and goes down into your body, particularly with the earlier variants, the the Delta variant, uh, which was, you know, actually quite quite a dangerous variant, as you probably know, uh, they start, you know, when it gets there, it starts to damage your tissues, you know, your your blood vessel cells, the endothelial cells. When it gets to a more advanced stage, it starts to damage your the other organs or property. It causes this cytokine storm, which causes your your whole body's uh, immune system to attack itself. It gets to a huge inflammatory process. Now, when we place one on a thymus, the theory is the bone marrow um, actually helps to manufacture stem cells. And among the stem cells will go to where it is required and helps your body to heal. And the precursor to the T cells actually go to the thymus gland to get matured. And then you have a increased production of uh, T cells to help your immune system. Now that's the uh, the idea, and being positioned there, that's also close to your lung. You know, when your lungs damage your pulmonary areas, and where you have endothelial cell damage, it helps to heal because in photobiomodulation, the mitochondria also releases growth factors, and the growth factors go into the healing process. Now, the other thing that uh, is in literature but not really well discussed and well well tested is the uh, production of melatonin. The production of melatonin in response to to the light produced by the X plus on the body. Exactly. The mitochondria has the ability to produce melatonin. This melatonin is actually different from the melatonin from the pineal gland, which is uh, goes into your circulatory system. This is a subcellular melatonin, which actually helps the cells to stay in a healthy state because melatonin is also anti, is you know antioxidant. It helps to neutralize free radicals, and that is why I think um, photobiomodulation is pretty effective in keeping people healthy and you know um, helping with uh, to deal with free radicals. So that is all part of the big picture. By the way, the the X plus, from what I understand, even though the the main neuro duo device that I was talking about does 810 nanometers uh, at either the alpha or the gamma frequency, the X plus uses that 633 nanometer wavelength. So you're technically kind of, if you combine the two, getting both the benefits of the 600-ish nanometer wavelength light plus the 810 nanometer. And then with the X plus, you can choose to place it over either the thymus or the cerebellum or the gut, depending on which area you want to target for that day's treatment, right? Yeah, yeah. You got it right. It's a very cool combo. And it only it only takes like 30 seconds to just like pull on and, and turn on, which is pretty, pretty convenient. So that's pretty cool about the about the COVID trial that you guys are doing and also what you found for the advanced meditators as far as triggering that immediate switch into a bliss state. But of course, one thing that, and, and I think this was initially how I got interested in you, that you guys have found a, a lot of benefits for this for is for uh, post-concussive symptoms and TBI. What's the latest on that in terms of the use of, of the, either the alpha or the gamma waves and what you guys have found? You know, the one th- worry about t- TBI, particularly among high-level athletes in, say, football, uh, when they retire, you know, the effects of repetitive concussion, you know, starts developing to CTE. It's almost like uh, it's, it's degenerative. It causes uh, suicidal ideation. You know, they lose control of their behavior. Uh, so it's it's um, it's quite kind of thing. You know, it's. Uh, something a very high percentage of retired football players actually went on to show signs of this tau, uh, the markers in the brain that could it develop into, um, you know, is CT, which stands for cr- chronic tra- traumatic encephalopathy, which is pretty much to do with the brain. You know, I I talked to a lot extensively to Margaret Nasa of Boston University about this. She and Boston University is also like the hub of. Um, you know, CTE research, but she's not in that particular group. But but it is of a great concern that we, we thought, you know, we really ought to 
to spread a message that if photobiomodulation could treat traumatic brain injury and reduce the instances of CTE, and maybe, and they, you know, we don't have enough data to, you know, big data with many, many uh, subjects to confirm, but the case series that we've observed have seen actually uh, retired athletes with CTE going through the neurodegeneration process of experiencing the inability to control behavior, depre- uh, experiencing PTSD, experiencing sleep problems, experiencing depression, they have recovered. So Dr. Nazar's group, they've just published a paper, and I think you could make that, you know, that available to your audience as well, uh, to show the the remarkable improvement, I, you know, I seldom use the word remarkable, but it's quite remarkable because I know at least one of these retired athletes quite well. And he, Larry Carr, he's out there advocating for photobiomodulation uh, because he actually got his life back from, you know, from a, a path of, you know, a disastrous path to being pretty normal. He's now in adjunct professor at the University of Utah. And he's one of the subjects in this particular paper. Now, if someone's using this for post-concussion symptoms, what if somebody had a concussion like 10 years ago? Is it going to be able to cause neurogenesis in old damaged brain cells? Is this something that needs to be used acutely, like right after an injury? Is it something that would be used uh, preventively to enhance brain health to diminish the risk of of concussion? Or what, what would be the practical usage for something like this? I would say all of that. You can use it preventively because you you know you kind of prime your brain to be able to withstand. There's something some of that in the literature. You can uh, particularly use it post concussion uh, after your activity where you feel like you're gonna knock, but you, even if you don't experience symptoms, you know your your brain has already you know has experienced it, and it can be shown in imaging. So. Yeah, use that even though you don't have symptoms because it's going to help your brain to recover. But if you do have symptoms, here are the papers. In fact, University of Utah is doing quite a lot of work. They they are in the process of preparing manuscripts for publication. They have presented in conferences. I think they have a few posters out already. We're actually going to do more work with them. And I, you know, the 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 best thing for me is they did all those work independently. I had no influence on the protocol, so they, you know, it was totally independent. So there's a lot more credibility to those findings. Apart from that, you know, that area, including Brigham Young University, they are also experimenting on healthy athletes to observe the improvements in performance. You know, that is being the the data is out. I don't have all of it in detail. Um, you know, this is fully another another independent study, and they found improvement in grip strength. In response to using the red light therapy on, on the head, they found an increase in grip strength? Yeah, yeah. On the, They basically used the gamma, the grip strength, plus uh, improvements in on-field decision-making. They actually did something called the trail-making B test, which actually is a test of your cognition and how uh, it's a test of your attention, following uh, trail markers, also how you can deal with distraction and uh, multiple elements introduced into into your performance, into your decision making. So you could technically use something like this. You, you could put it on pre-workout, for example, put it on the gamma, the 40 hertz frequency, and potentially get things like an increase in grip strength or focus or decision making. We've already established there's a nitric oxide release and that alone is gonna help with a workout. And many people who might have done like full body red light therapy have probably experienced that blood flow effect. But what you're saying is you could literally like use this right before a workout as almost like a way to amp up the body pre-workout or pre-competition to do something like increased grip strength or on-field decision making. Yeah, I, I was actually quite pleasantly surprised with this finding. I've never actually thought about uh, before this. Although I say, okay, maybe, you know, because the brain is really your, your control center for your whole body. You improve that, you, you know, it's, yeah, you can link the, the health of your primary motor cortex 
to the power to your muscles, your your limbs, and, and all that kind of thing. Uh, that could be part of part of the reason. Now, uh, improved signaling to the various parts of your body, and the chiropractors can attest to that. Is all about you know gaining power by improving the signaling from your say your spine to the other parts of your body. Here, you're talking about the you know your whole uh, brain and spinal area. Right. So. Uh, they can relate to that, but I'm glad they, they did this study because you know it is kind of give validation to what we I kind of think may happen. Yeah, yeah, and and you know regarding the use pre workout, I know it's on your website. You have a picture of somebody actually working out with dumbbells while wearing the headset. I, I don't think I could ever wear this thing at the gym just because I'm very active when I work out, and I suppose I could maybe like ride a bicycle or walk on a treadmill or something while wearing it. But the idea of just like putting it on pre workout or even like in the car as you're driving to the gym or something like that that seems like pretty low hanging fruit. Now, what about the the part that you had mentioned to me in an email exchange we had earlier this week about pain? management like the treatment of chronic pain what have you found as far as that's concerned yeah you know one thing about photobiomodulation is there is enough in the literature to to show that it reduces inflammatory factors and when you have chronic pain it is very often attributable to the presence of the inflammatory factors you are not fully healed the body is, is there sometimes it amounts to almost like autoimmune, your body starts to attack itself, and all this complicated stuff. But photobiomodulation has been found to reduce this. We are actually doing some work to see, you know, related to long, our, long, our upcoming study on long COVID. We are, but we are going by that, uh, by that theory. So a lot of chronic pain is to do with that, and I believe the reduction of the inflammatory factors help. Now there are other things when you, like I've said before, you know, when you deliver photobiomodulation, you help to to reduce the presence of free radicals. You you help to synthesize uh, growth factors that help with the healing and stuff. And actually, anecdotally, try that on retired athletes, particularly football players. You know, they got you walk. When they retire, they, they walk away with so much injury to the bodies and they don't necessarily experience a lot of it when they are young. But when they get older, you know, things are set in, your body don't recover as quickly. But I've, I've seen where you can literally see the joints swollen and they wear braces. And I put this a photo by modulation, we pounce it at 1000 hertz. And I, I believe a faster frequency has an inhibitory effect on the tissues. It actually helped to reduce pain almost immediately, which is quite interesting. We are doing separate studies to try to validate it, but uh, generally I'm not inventing anything new in pain treatment. Uh, using photobiomodulation for pain has been around for, for a very long time. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so let's talk about the logistical usage. I, I know that with red light therapy, a lot of times you don't want to overdo it because you know too much red light therapy may create reactive oxygen species and more is not necessarily better. I've heard in the past that somewhere around like 20 to 25 minutes a day or a few days a week could be a pretty good range to target. But what do you think as far as best practice? Let's say somebody listens to this podcast and they decide they're going to get like the neuro duo. So they could do alpha or gamma and maybe they're going to get the, the body X to go along with it so they can do some body treatments. You know, currently my protocol is I'll do it on either like Monday, Wednesday, Friday or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Although after having talked with you on this podcast, I might start to just wear it a little bit pre-workout on some of the other days as well. But what do you think as far as best practices go for the frequency or the length of usage? So we have a general statement which I, I put out there and say, look, if you're generally, everything's normal for you, you're healthy, um, you want to just maintain your good health and maybe a little bit, be a little, a little bit better, you, all you need is once every two days because of the risk of overdoing stuff, you know. You know, the thing about photobiomodulation, you deliver a dose, and the dose stays there for, depending on your, the state of your body and the person, you could be there for a few hours to a few weeks. So imagine if you keep doing it, you keep accumulating the dose, then every time your electron transport chain in the mitochondria is doing activity, you're also producing 
of free radicals, reactive oxygen species, which you, you need to allow your body to clear. Photobiomodulation helps, but too much of it may produce too much of free radicals that your body hasn't had enough time to clear. So that's why I say, okay, generally for a healthy guy, not doing, you know, just doing a normal, uh, doing normal activities once every two days is enough. But you can experiment. It's not a hard and fast rule. It depends on the person. You can try once a day and see how you feel. But I think if you're doing a high stress activity, you know, going through an illness it is a given. You, you know, your cells are all going through stress. So you're probably okay doing once a day, maybe even twice a day. Now, if you're doing, you know, highly stressed activity like, you know, in competitive sports, uh, you're, you're, you're putting your body through a lot of uh, physical stress. I guess you could do once a day or maybe pre and post. So you can experiment with it because, you know, you when you're doing doing all this activity, you are actually producing a lot of free radicals and perhaps photobiomodulation can help to actually reduce that. And you have, you also producing some inflammatory factors as well. And photobiomodulation may be able to help reduce that. Then you've got this building of muscles that the growth factors with photobiomodulation may be able to synthesize. Yeah. Yeah. And do you combine it with anything? Like we talk about methylene blue and in my opinion, both Chilajit as well as chlorella can also pair pretty well with photonic light therapy or photobiomodulation, you know, and, and so I might get up in the morning and take a little bit of methylene blue orally or uh, use like this, this kind of like black mineral type of extract called Chilajit or even like chlorella from, from like a dark green compound like algae. And I find that that seems to also amplify the effects of the red light therapy in a similar way as like using a microdose of say like psilocybin or LSD seems to pair pretty well with the gamma 40 hertz signal. But is there anything else that you found combines well, either from a supplementation standpoint or other, you know, biohacks, so to speak, that you might combine with something like red light therapy? Yeah, I, actually, a theory was proposed a number of years back by a professor at the University of Texas at Austin, Professor Gonzalez Lima. Actually, he proposed combining uh, photobiomodulation with methylene blue to actually alleviate Alzheimer's disease. I haven't tested it this way, but there is a, a theory behind it. In fact, there is a company in the in the height of the uh, pandemic. There is a group in British Columbia, near in Vancouver, actually proposing uh, photobiomodulation with uh, methylene blue that's delivered into into the uh, spread into the nose. So, oh, really? Like like an intranasal methylene blue treatment? Yeah, yeah. I think they patented that particular treatment, but you feel an adverse effect cut back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about how people could actually use this because I know these devices are not inexpensive. I think we have like a 10% discount code uh, Greenfield and all. You go to bengreenfieldlife.com slash vlight, V-I-E, light. And I know you can get a discount with code Greenfield. But let's say somebody wanted to kind of like get the unit I have, which, which seems to work perfectly for me, even though I'm, I'm interested now in the Neuro Pro. But I've got the Duo which is the gamma and alpha, and then I have that combined with the body X. I just went over your website. It looks like you've got the duo plus the X plus three combo. So the exact one that I'm using, yeah, it's like right around $3,000 to get the duo plus the X plus three. And then I guess if you use our coupon code, you'll save 10% off of that. So you save, you know, maybe like uh, 300 bucks or so. But that would be the one, the Neuro Duo X plus three combo is what I would recommend to folks if you want to actually try this out. And I mean, it's, it's one of those things that there's certain things I own that I use like every week all the time. My infrared sauna, my hyperbaric chamber, my PEMF mat, my weights, and then this this neuro device is just absolutely amazing. So I'll link to all this in the show notes for people who want to try it out. And I also did another podcast with Lou that I'll link to also if you guys want more of kind of like the basic science behind it, because we did a whole podcast on photobiomodulation as well. So uh, Lou, anything else you want to bring up while I have you on the call about V-Light? Advanced meditators in the Tucson area wants to be part of the clinical study. Um, yeah, they, you can, I think there's a link on the website somewhere for this particular study and also in the Toronto area. I think it's a very exciting uh, frontier 
for even for photobiomodulation, experimenting with, you know, getting to a, a higher state of the brain. I agree. I, I mean, I personally think oxygen therapy, uh, such as ozone therapy, hyperbaric therapy, exercise with oxygen therapy, along with pulsed electromagnetic field therapy and grounding or earthing, along with red light therapy and photobiomodulation, basically like the air the earth and the light. I think those three components are kind of like the frontier of performance of medicine. You know, I think sound and vibratory medicine might be a fourth if you want to throw that in there, but you know, the places you can go, you know, non-pharmaceutically with a lot of this stuff is just absolutely astounding. So I think this is just one of the coolest devices that exists out there. So Lou, thanks so much for coming on the show, sharing this with us. And again, I'll, I'll link to everything uh, along with our discount codes. And if Lou's able to get us a discount on the NeuroPro, I'll link to that as well. Just go to bengreenfieldlife.com slash Lou Lim. That's bengreenfieldlife.com slash L-E-W-L-I-M. Lou, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. Well, thanks for inviting me, Ben. Perhaps we'll schedule another update sometime in the future. Yes, maybe more frequently than every five years. All right, folks, I'm Ben Greenfield, along with Lou Lim of V-Lite, V-I-E-L-I-G-H-T, signing out from bengreenfieldlife.com. Have an amazing week. Just imagine a hotel surrounded by nature, vineyards and gardens, this forest classified as a historical garden in a very special country, at a hotel located in the oldest demarcated wine region in the world. Imagine this place has a state-of-the-art spa, 2,200 square meters, 10 treatment rooms, an indoor pool with underwater sound and chromotherapy. Imagine a kitchen team that brings to the table not just delicious food at this place, but values environmental sustainability and wellness and local sensitivity and global sensibility. Imagine being able to be bathed in luxury and being able to be local, to buy local, and to eat local, not caged off as some fancy tourist, but as a part of the community and a part of the terroir of the region. Well, that's exactly what you experience in Portugal at their Six Senses Luxury Retreat. And I'm going to be there for a special event that you can read up on at bengreenfieldlife.com slash Six Senses. It's called the Boundless Retreat. And at bengreenfieldlife.com slash Six Senses, you can see everything we're doing. Every day starts with a healthy farmhouse breakfast, morning movement session with me. You get access to three different 60-minute spa treatments that you can choose from throughout the day, indoor pool and vitality suites, meditation, sound healing, an alchemy bar with kokodama and yogurts and pickles and sprouts workshops, retreat meals all made from locally sourced organic produce, Q&As and sing-along sessions with me. This is going to be an amazing remarkable once in a lifetime experience you get four nights full board accommodation in a deluxe room there at the facility and this thing as you can imagine is going to fill up fast it's in portugal at the six senses retreat in portugal again all the details are at bengreenfieldlife.com slash six senses and the dates are february 27th through march 3rd 2023 february 27th through March 3rd, 2023. I hope to see you there. More than ever these days, people like you and me need a fresh, entertaining, well-informed, and often outside the box approach to discovering the health and happiness and hope that we all crave. So I hope I've been able to do that for you on this episode today. And if you liked it, or if you love what I'm up to, then please leave me a review on your preferred podcast listening channel, wherever that might be. And just find the Ben Greenfield Life episode. Say something nice. Thanks so much. It means a lot.